How you doing everybody? Daniel here with uh, another video. This time I'm featuring the V6 muzzle brake available from Carolina Shooters. This uh, brake is originally um, manufactured by V6 Industries, but due to some uh, shipping issues uh, in the era of COVID, uh, the manufacturer was not able to deliver the brake to me, but thank goodness that uh, the good people at Carolina Shooters were able to uh, fill my order that I had placed uh, several weeks ago. But enough on that. Let's get into the details about this brake, which I'm really excited to finally bring to you guys. Uh, again, this brake is brought to you by uh, Carolina Shooter Supply, uh, dot com. Um, the links and information will be in the information box as far, excuse me, the information box along with uh, all the part numbers and additional links that you'll need for, uh, to, to find everything that you'll need to install this on your 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, in my case, it's going to be the VR80 and the FD12 that you will see in some of my other videos. Uh, so right off the bat, um, I noticed that the machining on this uh, brake is, is very well done. Uh, there aren't any rogue lines. Um, all the corners are sharp and even on the inside uh, there's no burrs or any kind of machining debris left over. So I'm very impressed with the quality. I'm also really impressed with the weight of this thing. This thing barely weighs anything. I wish I had a scale and I could tell you exactly um, how much it weighs. Uh, but it's manufactured from a stronger 7075 T6 aluminum. Uh, previous generations were manufactured from 6061 T6, uh, but the current gen um, is, as I said before, 7075 aluminum. And uh, so far, um, the threading, I've been messing around with it a little bit, uh, is it, very, very good, um, and the tolerances are, are quite tight, right where they need to be. Okay, so let's take a look at the choke adapters. This is your standard Benelli mobile uh, choke. Um, one thing it is missing is a notch in here that you can use uh, just to snug it up. Uh, but there is a way around that and I'll discuss that as I install it in on the VR80. So um, this one here, which is a little bit shorter, will go on uh, the FD12. And it is listed on the parts, um, excuse me, the packing slip as a Winchester type. But uh, Silencer Go calls it uh, Mossberg. Um, yeah, it's a longer one. As you see here. Yes. So. Yeah, this is uh, the Mossberg uh, choke for the Silencer Co. Salvo 12, uh, but on the packing list here, it's called the uh, Winchester choke. Um, so please don't let that confuse you. Just so you know, uh, in case that you haven't seen some of my um, older videos, uh, the VR, excuse me, the FD12, the bullpup shotgun from Black Aces Tactical, the second generation one uses the Mossberg type. The earlier generations with the key mod holes on the side of the receiver for the bullpup uh, shotgun uses the Benelli Mobile, which is the same as the VR80. Uh, I don't know why they changed, but that's all information for another video. So for the FD12, you will need the Winchester 12 gauge muzzle brake. Um, and as you see here, here's the part number. And when we get into the website, uh, all you have to do is search for this portion of the part and the correct part will be top of the list along with these all these other parts uh, to install this this is a, a, a unidirectional a muzzle brake meaning that it has to be orientated to the 12 o'clock position in order to uh, function the way it's supposed to right by redirecting those hot gases uh, to counteract uh, the recoil which would raise the muzzle up the jets push the muzzle down. And as you noticed uh, on this VR80, some of the jets are pointing at you, uh, and that is to provide a, a pulling action to the recoil. But um, with this muzzle brake at the end of your barrel, um, the blast should be going up and over your head. Um, so you're not going to, you know, uh, 
feel as much, uh, you, you may feel some percussion, excuse me, you may feel some percussion uh, from this break, but we're going to see what it actually feels like when we get it out to the range. Maybe it's not such a big deal. Uh, but with any break, th that is how they work, is by redirecting the gases, and uh, you're, you're going to find that it, it is a little bit louder than if it wasn't, if you did not have a break. What kind of ammunition can you run through these? A manufacturer says that it's been tested with all different types of ammunition, and you should be able to um, run any standard ammunition uh, through this break. As I mentioned before, uh, this brake will redirect the gases and the sound so you, it may sound uh, louder than if you didn't have a brake on there. Is there any risk of uh, blowback? The V6's design does not intrude into the path of passing ammo debris. The angles are set in such a way that only the gases are captured and redirected. Uh, this information comes directly from the manufacturer. Okay, let's go ahead and install it uh, first on the VR80. Um, I remember which of these chokes is for which is because the VR80 is longer than the FD12. So, the longer one, VR80. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're installing this is let's go ahead and drop it in there. And as I mentioned, the machining is very good and it slides right in there. Okay, you want to get this a uh, little bit more than hand snug. best you can. You want to wrap a cloth around here to protect these threads and this is why I wish that there was a notch cut on the top of here so that you could use uh, the choke tool that everybody has um, that's even supplied with your, your variety. And I'm not pressing down on this very hard. Just enough to get grip and I'm talking about maybe just turning it a quarter turn. You don't need to go crazy with that because then it'd be impossible to get off. Then what you want to do is you want to use this locking nut uh, which is um, available right here. It's called Russian Lock Nut. Just search for this and this part will come up. So I'm going to put it on into here and it's simply once you get it threaded on there spin it down just like that. It's going to go all the way down to the bottom. And then of course the brake. You see it goes on there quite well. Okay, yeah, that's the right amount of play in there. Okay, so that's where it goes. It wants to go, but you have to orientate it back to the 12 o'clock position. And you're turning this counterclockwise up against the brake. Uh, and you can use uh, adjustable crescent wrench. Uh, the diameter of the lock nut is one inch or a proc, or what do I have on here? A 25.4 uh, millimeters. Okay, so I'm not going to wrench it down super tight. The there is a video on how to how to do that uh, right from Carolina Shooters. So I'll just include the link there, and you can click on it in case that you don't know how to do this. Uh, you can use Loctite, but I recommend using uh, the lock nut. This way, you have a lot more flexibility. Now, the good part about it is that if the VR80 is the only platform you're going to use. Uh, this brake with is that once you get this thing tightened down you can actually unscrew this and it will let's see if I got it yep so it's gonna bring the whole choke adapter with it oh, and it's starting to loosen up on me already but if I did have it tightened down it wouldn't do that and it will basically uh, without going through all of that again uh, it will re-clock itself to the proper orientation. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the VR80. Before I remove it, I want to show you. And it weighs nothing. So you just have that little extra length, but um, on the VR80, yeah, I think it looks pretty badass, uh, the way that's on there. Take a second and thread this. Just put it on the FD12. And if I end up liking this brake, you know, there's no reason why I can't just buy another one. Just to be able to keep it on the platform without having to change the brakes. 
or excuse me, change the choke adapters. Okay, so we'll just leave that on there. All right, so now we have the shorter one, as I mentioned to you before, and this threads right in there. There's a few different ways you can throw these on. I do wish that this thing had some flat spots on it, or at least not just cutting the top again, so you can use um, your choke wrenches that you already have just to snug these things up because these don't need to be super tight in the gun. Um, we're going to find out if while we're shooting the thing, uh, it starts to move and then what we can do about that. So you see, it goes on here quite just as easy. Uh, and it almost wants to go to the right spot. That's pretty cool. All right. So there it goes located at the 12 o'clock position. Let me give you a little notch to just confirm that. And this is what it looks like on the FD-12. All right. So I'll be taking it out to the range and uh, we'll see what this recoil is like both with and without the chokes and uh, uh, excuse me, without the V6 brake. And we'll see uh, uh, the performance and you know what my uh, impressions are when we send some rounds down range. I will traditionally use uh, this federal field and target that comes out at 1200 feet per second. It's really wimpy stuff. And so far it has run flawlessly through both my VR80 and the FD12. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, the next segment is going to be us uh, sending some lead down range. Stay tuned.